Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. I'm Tori. I'm Sam. I'm Jesse. And I'm Josh. And today we are going to be going over a contemporary poem that one could find in the July and August of 2018 issue of Poetry Magazine. And that poem is called Mansplaining. Or online. Mm-hmm. Poetry Foundation. On your phone. That's the same th- That's Poetry Magazine. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so you, they also phone. have it for free <laughs> on their phone. Certain people did that. And <laughs> Mansplaining was a poem that was written by Jennifer Militello. And Tori, you have a discussion starter? The poem almost has this borderline stream of consciousness feel to the whole entire narrative of it. Is this somebody who is responding to having a man splination episode, or is this somebody man woman splaining a man splaining? Woman splaining a man splaining. I feel like it's this whole build up, and you finally she gets it all out in one moment, just one long yeah, it's stream like this big of explosion. thought. Yeah. yeah, I got more of a, a her responding to it out of the poem. At least when I read it, it was just like, uh, here he goes again explaining the air, or the, what is it, the air of arrogance that he has. And, air of authority, like, authority leaves me Yes, lost. authority, I'm sorry. Um, and just like, here he goes again, mm-hmm. as if I don't know mm-hmm. how I have to listen to this, kind of like, blah, kind of <coughs> feeling. That's what I got out of it. Kind of like a Sylvia Plath uh, taking her hand, uh, playing her hand at uh, E. Cummings, because it was very much... Ooh, uh, I like that, yeah. Uh, it was very much uh, of a rant uh, against the patriarchy. It was a frenetic rant. There was something about it that was just borderline, like, exasperated with a, a tinge of anger. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I don't know you've ever been in that position, but where you've found yourself in a situation where it's something that is completely understandable, and then all of a sudden you have somebody break it down and talk to you. And I think the key aspect of a mansplain is not so much that somebody is telling you something. I absolutely love learning about new things. I love it when somebody tells me something, or if they know something, uh, and they're more knowledgeable about it, or not, doesn't matter. I find it a great explanation, because maybe they know something I don't. It's generally when you have somebody mansplain something to you, there's a tone of voice there that says, you're inferior, you are uh, innocent in the sense of almost childlikeness, and there's a, let me take you by the hand and lead you in the direction of something that is more than obvious. Mm. Now, there's other implications in here where it's more than just a mansplaining to me that I feel like. There's this pent-up aggression that kind of is more than just like a simple little incident like that like there's a lot of it there's certain things you 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 use my breath to sigh you know you are a a fisherman in a boat and you're watching me drown so there's a lot of these imagery portions and snippets because it, it starts out with these sentences and then as you get farther and farther into the poem it kind of almost becomes frantic in these tiny little clippings of of helplessness, which is kind of almost the counterpoint of what a mansplain is, because you're not helpless. You're anything but helpless in that situation. You know exactly what's going on. But um, there's this feeling of I am now dredging something up that I didn't want, that has been packed down and tamped away and, and packed away because that's not something that I have the ability to, you know, address. And this is kind of that unplugging of something, of the skeletons in the closet tumbling out sort of scenario. And I feel, I feel that it is a rant, but I don't feel it really gets anywhere. Because no, the, no. the furthest call to action is the whole idea of all parts of me say, shoot on sight, aim for the artery or organ, good night. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it just, just seems like, you know, like, yeah. like an angry woman who's like, oh my god, here he is explaining this again, and I have to listen to this again. As if I'm stupid, and I must be stupid because I'm a woman. God, I wish he would just shut up. To so me, I it really doesn't I, get anywhere. Like, <laughs> that's what I get out of it. Part of it. <laughs> I think it's also part of it too that 
after so many times of hearing and experiencing it, you're you're preparing to hear it again, and you know you're going to hear it again in the future. So and it's swimming. just this absolutely and yeah. that's always going to happen. It's kind of like a Sisyphusian like uh, uphill battle of you are at your wit's end, and the unfortunate thing is like you know it's going to happen again. Oh, there it is happened going to be in my somebody... house last week. My father was explaining something, and that was my favorite thing, was he was trying to do almost the exact same thing, explaining something to me that I already knew. But the thing was, he was wrong. <laughs> and that was the best part. Was sitting there like, mm-hmm. It's making the assumption that your knowledge is greater just because, Superior, you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because you are a man, so you automatically have just mm. this better grasp of the subject. Mm -hmm. mm. And the so, fact yeah. that they have the... Uh, that they have the uh, the final say of uh, everything as a whole, uh, the whole uh, autopilot's, my autobiography, the idea yeah, the that patriarchy signed, is going to determine the legacy. I don't know why that, the autopilot of my autobiography, that, that for some reason that just kind of clung, it kind of dug, it, dug its hooks into mm. me for some reason. Um, without going into too much detail, I wouldn't say necessarily I've been mansplained, but I've been in situations where uh, a man tried to take over the narrative with a situation kind of like a last week's conversation of pushing it to the side making sure he was the victim didn't try to take the blame so I won't go too far into it but he tried to kind of take over the entire scenario and for some reason this went from mansplaining into like deeper stuff you know there was uh, deeper waters and, and a far more emotional Trauma is not what necessarily what I want to use, but like there was some stuff there. There were some issues and it. it was kind of almost that like anguished feral cry into a, a dark void of, you know, this isn't going to get me anywhere, but this has been going on and it hasn't been happening to me. It's been happening to all of <coughs> womanhood, basically, or anybody yeah. who has been in a minority <clears throat> um you yeah, know, I was gonna say position. I mean, it's, it's not just a woman. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not just a woman ever, I mean, in that lesser yeah, position. Yeah, mm -hmm. whoever's in the um, the lesser power position. So you know, it's a power play. Yeah. Of, generally speaking, a white male or a male who is going to be the person who cis is going straight, to be a cis straight white male. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yes. they're generally speaking the individual who is going to be the individual in charge of. I'm gonna say individual one more time. Individual. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm We're trying. We're trying. But trying. yeah. So long story short, <laughs> it, it's that sensation of uh, not just a personal something that has personally happened, but an attack on that minority. Right. That sensation yeah. of being part of a minority that has that howling into the wind <laughs> of you know there is no there's no shelter from this, and there's no way of, of, of making it stop anytime soon. Yes. And uh, that that final sentence of good night is kind of that really great way of of, of taking control for just a fraction just of the center. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah, that tiny bit of being able to have the upper hand. You know, like, I'm, I'm ending it. Yeah, done. yeah. Mon yeah. You know, just one done. word. Good night. Yeah. Ending it. Period. Yeah. Done. Mm -hmm. So and, and nothing like was really all that specific in the poem either. You could have either mm. end. It could be anyone, honestly. But it is like a, a higher up and someone who is inferior, and. It, I mean, uh, nothing to s specifically that much. You wink at me, and I must relate that. I can totally see that as... Yeah. I saw that as flirting is in order. Yeah. The fact that like, if he's doing that, uh, he's flirting, and he expects a response, and a good absolutely. one. Yeah, that. he is owed And that's response. the unfortunate thing, is, like, there's a lot of responses to that. If somebody's flirting with you, if you don't engage, that's mm. flirting back. If you do engage, that's flirting back. Yeah. So no matter what you're doing, you're kind of at a loss. That person has chosen to just objectify you in some way yeah. shape or form and no matter how you responded you know there's a societal love oh she's playing coy oh she's playing hard to get you oh, can't she's win being sultry no and playing what. along yeah. with it like there's no winning it's a mm. it's a yeah. it's an uphill battle as long as you're just mm -hmm. in that space it's like you, you're at a loss mm -hmm. so don't tell me that you haven't been in a situation mm -hmm. where oh, something like oh anytime happened. you go to the club yeah. literally you every time store, you go to the bar yeah anything <laughs> like so the only clear explanation <clears throat> is a restraining order delivered to your house and signed. And even Fair then, they might look at it and be like, oh, she's back. really playing hard to get yeah, here. Yeah, right? There are some people who it's <laughs> just... It's really dense. It just doesn't get through to people. But yeah, uh, <laughs> we... 
what I find interesting is this is less of a man's a response to a mansplain and just a response in general to like that whole sphere of the patriarchy. The social, yeah, the patriarchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In as much, yeah, that it's kind of almost mm-hmm. a, a resounding cry of enough. Mm-hmm. Of like you said, it doesn't go anywhere, but mm-hmm. it's still uh, that's still inside. That's still something. That I is even th- I even think that the uh, that last line "Good night" was not strong enough. I really and do. And I, I don't think, think it was impactful. Like, while it while it's kind of like taking the upper hand and say, putting like the final word, literally having a, a just one word final word, it's still kind of almost if, it's that it's feeling of thing. Yeah, I, I think exa- she feels yeah, it's yeah. exhausting. She's gonna get up and have to say mm-hmm. thing, the, the, say say the same thing the next day. Because Especially it, usually when I get into any kind of like argument, when I say good night, that's by all means go on, but I ain't listening. Like I'm done. And when I say good night, it might not sound authoritative. Authoritative. Mm. But it's good night. That's mm. it. No mm. more. I'm mm. over this, and nothing more will come about it for me. Mm. Not for me. <laughs> like mm. that's the I'm done. It's the white flag without necessarily giving up. Mm. If that uh, makes any I sense. I don't know if I would exactly call it a night a white flag. I I think it's more of a like a hands in the air like exasperation. Like, yeah. That's what I'm, uh, that's exhausting. What I'm, uh, exhausting. Like she yeah, 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 exhausting. Yeah. Exactly. So, but um. It's an interesting. It's an interesting poem. It is. It's um, very interesting. It's chewy. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. It's interesting. A, I, and I, I would have not. I don't. I don't. I can't think of another word for it. But chewy is, but chewy is like. <laughs> it's, you you have to like stop at every sentence. You can't stop. Uh, I, I don't. It, there's there's that one item that, like a pizza crust that yeah. you're chewing for. It's thoughtful. It's thought provoking. Um, it's something that I feel like necessarily. Again, you don't necessarily have to be a woman to identify with it because I think at one point or another we have all been, you know, mansplaining, <laughs> mansplained to, um, or in a position where somebody else feels that they are superior to you in any way, shape, or form, and kind of down talking to you. And that narrative, that stream of consciousness, mm-hmm. that just starts winding up and kind of blocking out the mansplaining kind of almost like a um zoning out sort of thing just focusing on that one person as the target for a much bigger much more convoluted topic oh, i i kind of have a question just to kind of yeah, like uh, you know oh now uh, you have see a yes i do <laughs> now we have a question um, <laughs> just just to kind of get everybody's opinion i mean mm-hmm. i know the word mansplaining generally um probably you know comes from the authoritative male um but i mean women what do you think of like women can do it too yeah oh absolutely. Um, and yeah, and women. i know it's like kind of weird and i know that as we've been discussing we've been saying like the authoritative figure but i feel like we've been talking like as uh, uh i mean i know when i'm thinking about it i'm thinking of my father my boyfriend like other guys yeah, it's very that personal. i know we have pre- because I know it's like we're yeah, about they, a woman they definitely they definitely have the ability to uh oh yeah no doubt but they're i have met yeah. Especially females who have just anybody, <laughs> anybody that. that has that air that they holier are than always now. right, yeah, yeah. Holier mm-hmm. than, that are always right, yeah, oh, the yeah, know-it-all. absolutely, yeah, know it all. So, I think that is a form of uh, mansplanation. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yes, but you know, it's more often than not found with a yeah. specific oh. yeah. subsect yeah. of it's somebody that, yes. <laughs> somebody that feels that. and can be arguably <laughs> just... a, a bearer of uh, power, mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a privilege that comes with it, so. Do we have any final thoughts? I think, I think we've touched on I all of that. I would say so. Yeah. Already it's then. Very oh, interesting man, little cute. poem. I would, I would say Yeah, that never that. assume that you are smarter than someone, because mm. everybody knows something that you don't. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. Mm. You if you're it. interested in checking out uh, this poem, uh, You can find it in the July and August of 2018 edition of Poetry Magazine. Uh, You you can also check it out online. Uh, If you Google it, uh, it will pop up. Yeah, it's like the first hit. Poetry Foundation. Yeah, right there. And uh, Militello is a... She's come out with plenty of uh, poetry chapbooks, and she is uh, uh, an instructor at a college. Be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading.